Now, Atletico, you, you got a few experienced heads in that roster. You got Slidzor J, Apudo coming over from Pacific, uh, Passos in there as well. Yep. For Scrimbucks, the only real, uh, I would say, name that I think you, you get a bit of experience from probably is Noosh. Uh, there's, there's not a whole lot there for Scrimbucks from what I can see. Apart from sort of, I guess, the, the argument that maybe new blood can come through and, and yeah. sort of forge their own path. But they don't have a whole lot of experience in that roster, which Atletico, that's the advantage that they have coming into this match. Yeah, I think Slids and Apudo have been playing the game in a professional sense longer than anyone I can think of. Apudo was way back in the summer series. He played for, what was it, MA Lackers? Yeah, I was going to say. Then. Yeah, yeah with, played with in face, Australia. With the coach of the LA Gladiators' mm. face was on that team. I remember beating them, actually. Actually, he even played in, I think, the ESL ANZ Championship. Yep. That, so that's a, that's, that's gone a back long, a long, long time. time. Anyway, let's uh, have a look at the maps for tonight as well, Smash, because that's always going to be pretty important. Now, one thing to note is, again, ov obviously alongside the format changes that we've had for, for the entire season, there's the format change for the games themselves. It's now first right. to three three as opposed to playing out all four games yep. which in theory can lead us to some quicker matches but in in reality we could still go to all five it sort of just depends on how these matches uh, end up playing out Ilios Eichenwald, Watchpoint Gibraltar, Hanamura and Li Zhang Tower all maps that we've seen before, all pretty standard stuff. I don't think that this should necessarily be much of a curveball for either of these two teams. No, these teams would have been practicing these maps. They would have known beforehand what's going, what they're up against, really. And uh, we have set strategies for them. A lot of these maps as well have been practiced in matchmaking, and they're really confident on them. So I I'm expecting teams to be pretty comfortable on these maps. There are some nice, odd little maps. Though. Watch point Gibraltar is one that could be some spicy picks. With that first point, it's always been favored for dive or sniper heavy compositions that haven't really been in the meta. We'll have to see what teams try and do there. Yeah, not a whole lot, actually, that we can go off based on the maps just yet because we haven't really seen any of these teams no. play this season so far. Uh, I mean, we have yesterday night, but they didn't play any of these maps. You know, we saw some, some good wins from Atletico on Busan, Dorado, Paris, uh, but in reality, not too relevant when it comes no. to this uh, map set. So, look, I, I guess we just deep dive into what we expect to come out of these two rosters. Now, I'm looking at this one. I'm saying I think Atletico is, on paper, the, the stronger-looking roster. We were having a bit of a discussion earlier today about how we felt Apudo was going to go. You were saying you might be leaning on a different side of the fence to me where I think he's going to sort of crush everything, but you're saying maybe he's going to struggle a little bit. Well, when Apudo came and first... Well, came to Australian Overwatch, mm. he played a lot of McCree, and he was clicking on everybody's heads, and everyone was like, this guy is insane. He's yep. an absolute superstar. He went through that OPC phase, and he did pretty well there in some teams over there, And but it's ever since, he's been a little bit shy. So if he can come out and really, you know, impose himself on these games, then we're in for a good showing. But if Apudo goes quiet, then Atletico might go quiet themselves. Well, let's wow. find out as we do head into Ilios Ruins. It's game one of Overwatch Contenders Trials. 2020 between Atletico and Scrimbucks. Looking forward to finding out how this pans on out. Straight away, we see the dive composition for Atletico with the Tracer and the Sombra using that new Brigitte as well. That's going to be fun to see how that matches up versus the side of Scrimbucks with the Widowmaker. Hunter is a very well known Widowmaker player on the ladder. Yeah, Winston going to dive on in. That's Proffer from Atletico. And I do see Hunter going very low. They try to get the Widowmaker working, but it's just not going to hold up to the dive there of Atletico. It's a good dive composition and well executed here as well by the Atletico roster as a Pudo on the tracer goes to town on the Baby Diva of Noosh. It'll be a tight victory for Atletico and the point captured. Straight away, we see the change for Scrimbox. Hunter going over to the Reaper. He flirted with the McCree for a little bit. Not a bad pickup, the McCree versus this dive composition. Deals well with the Brigitte as well. She doesn't do well with long range damage. She really wants to be brawling and keeping that Inspire uptime. Already a nano boost on the side of Atletico. You imagine that goes straight on the Winnie here. And it will indeed, as Proffer decides to jump on in, getting a, a lot of damage. You can hear the damage ticks, but I think this is a, a good area to, to take a look at. Apudo falling back on out, but does have a Pulse Bomb available here. That's going to go right onto the Reinhardt behind the shield, landed on the ground, but Dank will fall. The Pulse Bomb finding the first blood for this fight. Now we start to see the Dominoes fall as Atletico will grab another couple of kills and find themselves another fight victory. This is looking pretty clean so far, Smash. Yeah, slight nerves there from Dank. Didn't quite locate where the Pulse Bomb was to block it. Dank, a player that has really improved a lot over time. He hit some 
astronomically high numbers on the Korean leaderboard when he was playing Arissa on matchmaking. Let's see how his Ryan stacks up. This is a difficult competition to play into. The EMP from Slids, key this fight. Yeah, it certainly is. We'll wait to see whether or not that's going to get a good engage out here for Atletico. Backs against the wall now, though, for Scrimbucks, and they essentially have to make their way onto the point, which is going to funnel them into that one position. Here's the combo! It was a great EMP, caught most of Scrimbucks, but the Diva Bomb doesn't get too much. Still, it looks like it's going to be enough from Atletico to win the fight. Razor has managed to draw the first blood, I think, for Scrimbucks. I think that actually is their first kill of this round, but. Still not really going to matter in the grand scheme of things because Atletico will find a, a fairly clean wipe there, only dropping the one player. Well, Razor did everything he could there. He perfectly timed the beat to counter the EMP. He got the boop off the map, but unfortunately his team just couldn't survive. Dank now on the Winston. Nano boosted up. Possible misses. Can Dank get into the back lines here? Well, Laputo hanging on to that recall for quite a long time. Does allow him to put the extra damage to that Winston, but nonetheless, we do see a one-for-one -one trade. Poffa has gone down, so main tank out of the picture here now for Atletico, and finally starting to see them have some problems in a fight. Noosh putting in some good work, his opposition diva down low on HP, not getting those heals that he needs, will be demeked as well. And it seems finally Scrimbucks will be able to turn things around just by sheer weight of the ultimates that they have available. Yeah, but it is dangerously close to EMP time for Slids. As long as that nano boost comes through as well onto proper, this could be a quick retake and a quick round for Atletico. They are in one fight territory at 99. Nush needs to become up all prompts with the Diva Bomb. It's just Not a safe combo. Do you, do you just wait another few seconds here as Atletico to get that EMP up? Certainly do. I think the EMP plus Aloha's nade will be key to winning this fight as we see dive deep. That is Aloha gone though. That's a good engage from Scrimbucks just in time, just before Slids or Jay had that EMP. Scrimbucks, Scrimbucks have engaged the fight and they'll find themselves a fairly easy one off the back of the pick. Well done from Zupa on the Doomfist. Dank forced out his Primal Rage there, so that's an ult that they would have liked back. It really seems like a, a case of delaying the inevitable though, right? Atletico Certainly didn't done. use much there. They've got everything coming into this fight. They've even got the Diva Bomb now for Calibur's combo with that EMP. Razor not close enough to the beat, you'd say, for it to be in time. But Budo goes Ooh. down early to Zupa though. Well, can Atletico find a way to turn this around? It looks like they've gone for the combo, but it's absolutely whiffed. Oh dear, Atletico, what's going on here? EMP went in. Diva Bomb went in, and now Hunter's found two with a Pulse Bomb. That is not how that fight was supposed to go. And Atletico now are the ones, I think, that have their back against the wall. Yeah, they've got the ultimate mismatch now where Razor will have to beat, and he can beat freely to keep his team alive. Maybe beat Aputo's Pulse Bomb if he's tracked it well enough. But Zupa with that Doomfist ultimate means he can go super deep. And if he doesn't manage to get hacked, he's got that get out of jail free card. You've got to say, a bit of poor execution there from Atletico in the last fight. Now they don't really have Razor much hacked. to turn back on Zupa. A master stroke stopping over onto the Doomfist. Trying to bully Winston here. Proffer goes down low. This punch might not finish things off. But we're into the Meteor Strike, and that's going to land right on top of Aputo, but not quite enough to kill him. Noosh gets the kill regardless. And Zupa, very low on HP, but they've done enough, I think, here, Scrimbucks, to keep Atletico off of the point. Dank just getting his ult off before the hat comes through. That's important, and that's going to secure the round for Scrimbucks. Already an early upset. They had the Wombo combo, the EMP, the bomb, but that mis-execution, Jordan, you touched on it. That's going to cost them so much. That's a really heavy investment to get very little return. Already game plan okay from Atletico, but just the execution a little bit off. And that's probably the best map for Dive at this point. If they can really shut down that Widowmaker sightlines, which they did, forced Hunter off early, that gave them such a big advantage. Atletico now going to have to switch it up a little bit on this point. Sombra not as strong. Using that point for cover, you can dodge EMPs pretty easily. And you already see Slitty swapping off onto the Farah, a hero that... He played about three years ago. Not sure how Crash Hoddy is at the moment with it, but <laughs> I trust him. I was going to say, not uh, too big of a surprise to see Sutsu J on the fire. It seems to be like whenever he gets an opportunity to play that hero, he's straight onto it. I'm seeing a bit of this Wrecking Ball from Proffa though. It's, uh, I'm a big fan of Wrecking Ball. Yeah, there's no Sombra or Mei on the other t on the other team to contest him really, so Wrecking Ball can be very potent. There's a matchmaking player in EU that has actually made oh. to a top 500 without well. shooting on Wrecking Ball. Or Jay does need to be a little bit careful there because it seems like Poe's got really good aim on him. Still, a hole up falls early, which is obviously not a good sign for Atletico and, well, for Scrimbucks, it certainly seems to have turned things well and truly in their favor. Zupa chucking a rocket right into Minwoo's face, and Slizor Jay may as well just drop down. 
Yeah, there's not much choice there. Slitzor hitting some rockets, but not enough to secure the follow-up kill. Proper got slept, and that, that's a lot of impact out of the fight when your, your Hammond or your Wrecking Ball isn't in there causing that disruption. It means the Arna can freely heal, and he already swaps over to Winston. That's a, that's a better choice for me. Hunter with that pulse form early. Let's see what he tries to do with it. He's going to be forced out to recall early, and this oh. could be the end of him. No, just does get that health kill. Has a couple of blinks available. Well, one blink available now. Doesn't actually get it off as it's chased down by Proffer. That's really well done from Atletico, but it was a nice bionade right on top of Proffer that will result in the end of his life. Has to be a quick trade here from Atletico as that's what they're looking for. They're pushing forward to Pudo. The pulse bomb doesn't really have a good opportunity to, to use it here. And it, has to just recall out. Now the stick on to the Diva will, I think, result in the D-Mac there, and it does. But in reality, what kind of advantage is that if it's not followed up with kills? Well, Atletico won't leave us questioning that too much. As Slutor J and Calibur, alongside of Pudo, do inevitably finish off a few. That's a better fight from Atletico. Now they've built up Rocket Barrage on Slutor J as well. Yeah, and you can see the, the impact of these fires hasn't been really noticeable just yet, and that's thanks to that three-second booster cooldown on D.Va. That hero shuts down Farah too well. These Farah players are getting annoyed in the sky by the lady in the mech. Not only that, but uh, the Arnas as well, putting uh, good damage in. See Slid's dropping low to some Arnas shots already. Poe, without that nano boost this fight, Ooh. though, double tank ults for Scrimbox. Oh, well, you were talking a little bit about a Pudo and wondering how he would perform. I'd have to say, so far, Hunter has his number, at least on the Tracer battle. It is a hero he's not noted for, but now we see Dank going in deep, but he's not taking any damage. This is just going to be an easy cleanup for Scrimba. Slitz gets rezzed and the flip comes through. You just see that one player go down early for Atletico and you know that the fight is going to tumble as a result. This might well be a 2-0 on Ilios and, a, and an upset in my mind to start things off here in Contenders Trials. Yeah, certainly not the way I thought it was going to go, but there's still a good chance here for Atletico. They have some decent ults, the Nano Barrage and the Pulse Bomb all in the pocket. Calibur also with that bomb. We've seen time and time again Diva Bombs taking out pharmacies. Let's see if we can find one here. What can Slitz do with that rocket barrage? There's Zoopers, but it's I think almost all eaten up, but no, still gets proper. Noosh was there to hold off any kind of retaliation with the umbrella from the Diva. Now it's Slitz or Jay's turn, but in reality, what's he going to be able to do? He's being marked by so many players from Scrimbucks and he's seeing his teammates fall around him. I don't think this is going to be possible for Atletico to hold on, but Slitz or Jay certainly doing a mighty good job of it for the moment. Still hasn't used the Rocket Barrage and now has lost Minwoo. This has to be a Hail Mary. He's going to fire it out, but there's Hunter to fire him into the ground. And this is it. It's it. That's it. Scrimbucks are going to win this round. Atletico have let it slip. I mean, on Ruins, they certainly let it slip. They never really seem to get any control of Lighthouse. No, Hunter on that Tracer, a bit of a revelation there. I didn't, haven't seen him play a lot of Tracer. He's more of a McCree and a Widowmaker player, but he really showed up on that Tracer and proved to be the difference there. Pudo having a little bit of a quieter round. Hopefully that doesn't affect his confidence going forward. Maybe when we get into the more of a McCree matchup, that will be more suited towards his play style. But already some signs for Atletico. They need to work on a few little things. And it most of that comes down to that coordination. This team hasn't been together for an awfully long time. So not dire straits just yet, but when they can get on those compositions that require less coordination, I think they're going to shine a little bit more. Yeah, it's a difficult situation, isn't it? Because they got themselves into a lead, but they weren't really able to capitalize on that. That, that yeah. should have at least been a win on Ruins for them. Uh, when you look at the, how that fight probably should have played out versus how it did end up playing out. So a little bit of a, a letdown from Atletico. Scrimbox, though, you've got to give them credit for what they were able to achieve there. Being able to come back from what really did look like a pretty hefty deficit. They were down 99-0 to zero at one point on Ruins, and then able to come back on Lighthouse and, and finish it off 2-0. and zero. Does that lead you to any conclusions? Are you drawing any conclusions off of that? Or is that, you know, not enough of a, uh, not enough of a game to really give you much of an idea as to how the rest of this is going to play out? Because well, for me, that looks like Scrimbox is doing pretty well. Well, they are doing pretty well. There's no, no doubts about that. Control is obviously, well, it's often referred to as the coin flip to map type just because there is, there is that one fight that you can stuff up and then all of a sudden the game isn't in your favor anymore. And we saw that with Atletico on Ruins. So I'm not not panicking if I'm Atletico right now, yep. but I am just thinking a little bit about how we've gone and done things so far. That's the stick from Hunter for the double dinger. That's always good for a young DPS player's confidence going in their first appearance on stream and they get a nice little double kill. So 
Congratulations to Hunter for that one. Yeah, I think when you, you look back at the results for Scrimbucks already in Contenders Trials this year, being able to get the win over X69, 3-1, yeah. you know, that's a, a, a scalp, I think you could put it, uh, to put it lightly, right? They've been able to show that they can sort of tussle with these top teams, or quote-unquote top teams, the teams that have come through more so from for the last season of Contenders, have a lot more of that experience, and it's not seeming to really be a problem for them tonight against Atletico so far.